I'm expecting some some you know ah I hear it now all right <laughs> so welcome to the weekly series with dot station uh, that is focused on tech talk and as of now for the 21st April we have one topic in the document if you have other topics, please feel free to add them. And the first topic is by Maya and Frido, and it's regarding the feedback on Tamil's user experience by TensorFlow, the ZigBuild team at Google. So Maya, I don't see Frido here. If you would like to explain the issue, feel free <laughs> to do so. Hi, <laughs> I see Frido. <laughs> Oh, really? Hello. Yes. <laughs> oh, Frido, hello. <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Dominic, here's a twist how you're going to turn that around, right? Um, because you're very old school, you're going to give ladies first, right? So. Well, uh, because I'm working at the rest of the time, I'm gender neutral. <laughs> ah, okay. That is why you didn't see Frido. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can I can just flip a coin and see uh, <laughs> who gets the chance, right? Okay, so... Um... I start. Uh, then I just um, so Frido, I think transferred you uh, for the the email from uh, the sick builds of TensorFlow team at Google. So uh, if you had time to read it, uh, maybe you already saw this feedback. But I um, pasted some uh, some snippets of the email uh, that could be interesting uh, to examine a bit further and maybe turn it to uh, issues and like concrete uh, action items. Uh, because it's really interesting feedback. So um, basically, I think a uh, team member tried uh, Tamos and they gave some um, just feedback related to user experience and um, what he thought of it. So uh, if you want to share the screen, maybe. Um, okay, so. Thanks. Okay, so um, the first thing uh, I think uh, was that, uh, so this person spent a lot of time uh, using demos and um, apparently uh, he didn't give advice until uh, it changed uh, the overlay steering requirement format field. So how could we improve that? Like, is there some way to uh, make that more agreeable to use? Uh, what do you think? Is it an error? Do we know why it uh, took so much time? Just is it really correlated to the requirements format? Uh, so I don't think he spent 30 minutes uh, with this issue. Uh, so I understood that as uh, he spent 30 minutes playing with tables in total. And, uh, he just yeah. can stick with that. Yeah. Um, ah, OK. Uh, But anyway, it didn't give an advice. So um, there, there might be two causes for that, right? Either we don't know anything and it takes very long uh, or um, yeah, there's another error somewhere in there. Do we, do we know what he did or what the person did? I don't think so. It might be a good idea to know their environment uh, and how they configured tooling. It's not clear what they used. But in one uh, sentence, I think he mentioned uh, CLI examples repository that we have. So maybe check because there were uh, changes into the AMO configuration file. So maybe check if uh, CLI examples re repository is uh, still fresh and ready to be used. 
I, I did some it. changes to TotoYaml file, so uh, it might be that I introduced some some bug recently. Yeah, I think it might be because he mentions earlier in the mail as well that the mm, YAML configuration file must be created manually, I think, or something like that. Maybe he copied one from, might be from the CLI examples or maybe not, but I, I read this as that Tamos makes some assumptions of what you have there, like overlays there that might not be actually present. And the errors, if they don't match the expectations or assumptions, might not be too clear. Oh. Could that be? Like, you have a config file that doesn't really match what you have, and then the the errors are not saying, hey, your config doesn't match what you have. It, 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 you know, for a new user, it's not clear what's going on. Good. This is a nice example of uh, practicing all that uh, Scrum and OKR stuff. Um, because if we conclude that we would like to figure out wh what's really happening, um, the next question would be who's going to figure out what really happened on the user uh, laptop or wherever the person worked on, right? So shall we just hand it over to Zik uh, user experience and um, do we have a process to reach out to others? Is it something, uh, Frida, where you think we, we could just can send that person to open an issue and or uh, feels like it's, it's not good enough because um, time was invested, experience was not good, maybe, maybe bounce back with open issue, MF uh, is not a good idea. Yeah, I have probably issues with uh, I have probably issues with uh, network, but uh, if we can uh, try to replicate what he did, might be a good idea. Mm. Uh, Frida, do you want to reach out to them or um, um, Maya Gage? How, how do we do that? Yeah, we, we can uh, send an email like uh, in response to that. I think that, that would be fine. Good. Um, let's let's try to turn that into an issue, uh, a GitHub issue, and, and see what's happening. Yeah, so just to confirm that what we want to get from them is a, a bit more details of their test environment, right? Like, are they using in the best case, a reproducer, right? Uh, what what yeah. Thomas version, what uh, YAML file, what requirements or whatever they had. Okay, so I think we can go to the next topic, uh, like next uh, feedback issue. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the issue was that, uh, so Thomas recognized that uh, user configured the CUDA version and CUDA version, uh, but it's still, uh, so the advice still asserted that he liked CUDA. So I think that's about right. Feels like. Okay. And Regarding the second part, uh, it's excluded some of the units will uh, tensor for prescription until I fake the switch to Fedora. Um, so I don't know from what he switched switched exactly. So um, is that because uh, he was on uh, an environment that was not supported maybe? So he had to switch to Fedora to get advice? I think the, I think the TensorFlow build happens on Ubuntu. Uh, so maybe they used Ubuntu, uh, but we only have data for header and RHEL. So I think that's why they fell into that issue and they have to change it to one of the sub OS which we support. 
Okay. Um, okay, I see. Uh, so it's a bit linked to the third uh, issue, which is uh, that uh, Tamos uh, does not support uh, fully all uh, Linux distributions. So um, I think for you, you answered that in the email. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah, so TOT uh, as a resolver uh, can support more than Federal RL or UBI, uh, but we did not plug any solvers for that, like Ubuntu or other uh, operating systems. So uh, yeah, I don't want. I, I don't. I don't know how we want to proceed. Um, because plugging new solvers requires new resources, but also uh, maintenance when it comes to solvers and creating these solvers and things like that. So uh, let's see what what maybe let's see what community uh, will ask for, and if we will have use case for Ubuntu and. Eventually, we would like to invest to it, maybe, but also be able to. So, yeah, for example, uh, um, if the build happens on Ubuntu, uh, so should we, for example, try out uh, one solver that works on Ubuntu and just um, like allocate resources for like one test solver? Like, would that be possible or is it uh, too much maintenance? This might be a question also to, to management. Like if we want to support uh, other operating systems than the ones that are provided by Red Hat. Um, I'm unsure about that one um, because um, it is very twofold, right? Um, the uh, most people in emerging tech um, gonna have a look at uh, what is what is the benefit for Red Hat products in here, right? So we are focused on um, OpenShift, um, UBI8 images. Uh, we are focused on uh, roads um, as a product. Um, from a community adoption point of view, it is pretty obvious um, TensorFlow or uh, other communities work on uh, Ubuntu-based uh, images. Um, I think we should um, make that uh, transparent um, by, by really stating these requirements from, from the outside world and um, see if we can do it easily. If it, I mean, if it's, if it's a matter of um, an hour, a human hour, uh, let's do it. If you're going to burn 15 hours of t CPU time with it, let's do it. Um, I, but I, but I, I wouldn't do it if it takes us like five days to implement something like that, right? Let Let's make it uh, transparent um, that some other people like to use all that stuff on Ubuntu. Um, because I think it is not a very uncommon request from the outside world running something different than UBI8 images. But even even OpenShift people recognize that running Alpine-based containers is a thing on OpenShift. That is why I noted down, let's create an issue for that. Um, I don't know if um, if we just take the latest Ubuntu release and the latest Python release and give it a shot and figure out, oh, it takes just 50 minutes and uh, 500 CPU hours to do so. If we figure out it takes like 15 days to implement, then don't prioritize it. Uh. Also, this uh, thing that uh, he did, like faking uh, that he runs Fedora, it might be okay-ish for most of the stacks because um, this dependency data that we aggregate might be very similar on Fedora and Ubuntu. 
uh, if uh, there's run same Python interpreter version. Not all the time, they will be not uh, same all the time, but most of the time they might be very, very similar. So if people first, uh, if, if they are trying to use uh, Res Resolver, try with Fedora, even if they run on Ubuntu, they can have valid resolved log file. Mm. Yes, um, that, that is basically a hack around the fact that we don't have Ubuntu-based um, resolutions. Um, but it at the same time somehow dangerously neglects our purpose, right? Um, because that is exactly what we're trying to figure out. Um, is your software stack resolving differently in different runtime environments? But fair point, if you want to play around, why don't you just give it a try uh, with Fedora, with a uh, uh, runtime environment based on Fedora, because it will most probably um, resolve on the same uh, to the same software stack. Maybe that uh, is that something that we should put in in a documentation, uh, Frido. What do you think? Is it is it just like hack Ubuntu hack uh, somewhere in Tamos uh, documentation? You're muted, maybe. So yes, I think we can we can add it uh, and state that it's hack and experimental. But in most cases, it should work if uh, Python interpreter version is similar or the same, because uh, this relates to environment markers that are stated in uh, Python dependencies and they can uh, be specific to operating system that you use. So yeah. it really depends on, on packages that you you have in your application stack. Yes. Um, actually, I think we should figure out if uh, Ubuntu is really relevant, if it's uh, just um, the Google people, that is a statement. If there are small people, that is also a statement. If we figure out most of the data scientists that are going to use roads use Ubuntu anyway, that is also a statement. Uh, maybe we should really try to aggregate that that information. Is our focus on RHEL and Fedora um, too narrow? Okay. Yeah, and also try to quantify as uh, quantify how expensive or in terms of people time, but also resources to add new solvers. And because we recently had this uh, Fedora 35 uh, Python 3.10 and, and Grail 9 is coming um, and probably we have to kind of be more agile in adding new solvers if possible. and expanding in general so no. how much how but yeah much time did it take for like do we know i mean gregory thing i think did most of the federal 35 was it or harshad was it you no. it takes about two two months to generate the whole data for right, uh, that's for the yeah. And then and, and human time, like like how long does it take to merge the pull request for a new solver? Oh, you mean just to create the solver? Uh, less than a day, maybe. I mean, depends who is creating it. Uh, for Gregory, it was the first time, so it took some time. I mean, Frido, me might take less time to create these solvers. Shall we have a look at that uh, next week? So explicitly uh, inviting uh, Gregory and, and come to a conclusion what human time, what uh, CPU time does it take to have new solver data available? It seems to be a good practice anyway, because as Pep said, we are going to do it over and over again. Sounds good. 
Speaking of these solvers, I think uh, uh, we have uh, pretty good documentation. Like Gregory also created documentation with observations uh, and issues he had. It might be also a good idea to check uh, how the system will recycle data. Because if you add new solvers, that means that uh, identifiers in the in the database will increase. And then there's purge job that will remove all solvers. That's basically the maintenance of uh, the of the resolver, right? We have new environment, you in, in, you create solver for it. You let solver solve packages. These, uh, these results are synced into database. And after the environment is in end of life state, then you remove entries from the database. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, the database needs to keep rolling. Like you add new uh, new environment, you remove old environment. You add new environment, you remove old environment. And there might be a case when uh, you hit issues with identifiers, like uh, entries in the database. I don't know uh, how Postgres uh, behaves in these cases. So this is something worth to explore long term. Like if we hit 3 billion entries, like not 3 billion entries at one time, but uh, the identifier, the highest number of identifier in the database will be 3 billion if Postgres can start from the beginning, for example because there are limitations with respect to uh, ID size in the database. But like, like an auto increment ID that we are using? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, this might be uh, worth to, to check how Postgres uh, behaves in these cases. Maybe it can recycle identifiers. Maybe there's need to be turned on some configuration Okay, but uh, the general topic should be um, how much effort do we As, like the systems, as the system stabilizes, this is basically the main task uh, for maintenance. There's a new Fedora 42 running Python 4.10. Create solver, plug it, uh, remove old Fedora from, uh, from the database. That's good enough English, I hope. Okay, let's do it. Um, as I said, um, or as uh, Frido asked, from an from a management point of view, as an open um, service group uh, person, as an emerging tech person, I always need to ask myself, uh, what is the business impact we are doing with this? Can we sell more, better roads with this? Um, that's one question. As as an Toth a community member, I would say, hmm, this would give us an opportunity for better adoption, uh, specifically in the uh, TensorFlow community. 
maybe in other communities because they are Ubuntu uh, focused anyways. Um, so two, two folded sword, uh, two bladed sword here. Then let's figure out what the effort really is. Um, how much time do we need to invest to create the or to merge the pull request for a new solver? If you're going to burn 15 hours with or two months, uh, that is what Harshad said, uh, of CPU time, so be it. But I think the the most important effort here is the human effort. Let's uh, discuss that next week. Um, I, I try to reach out to uh, Gregory uh, Hashad if you're going to talk to him anyways or talk or chat. Um, please make him aware too, right? Uh, thank you, everybody. Let's see what else we got. There was more stuff. Yes. So uh, next thing is uh, so. I think they mentioned that uh, it would be nice, and I think maybe they would uh, like the SIG build uh, would link a uh, tutorial if it existed for uh, users of Fedora, RL, and UPI uh, to install TensorFlow. So I think that's something that we could create eventually and link ourselves also. Sounds to me like a new, I don't know, part of a key result, something, something, something. Um, uh, the uh, Q result three specifically is meant as community drive adoption. Um, so l let's try to figure that out. Um, maybe we can uh, circle back to them, uh, figure out what they really want. I don't know what the debugging process on Fedora should be, um, but having having uh, maybe a pretty hands-on. Um, TensorFlow-based tutorial, uh, not like in a Jupyter notebook environment, in an open data hub environment, but really just on your terminal. Maybe that is a thing. Um, if I remember correctly, there was an ML Commons Hello World tutorial thing on the Fedora magazine last day or last week or something. Maybe we can recycle that and uh, give it a Tamos twist. I'm going to look it up and put the link in for reference. I think we have some uh, example in CLI examples repository in the separate branch. And maybe have also the tutorial uh, managing uh, security vulnerabilities with thoughts uh, linked in. Uh, in that tutorial might be a good idea. It will be basically the same, like install TAMOS, add TensorFlow to your dependencies. It will be basically the same, but no. specific to, to TensorFlow. The last thing you said, security vulnerability management with TOS, is the developer Red Hat.com article, right? Uh, yes, and it links with uh, scholars Red Hat com, uh, the That's managing. Good. Yeah, I worked on Red Hat Scholars. I will post a link. My history has managing dependencies in your Python application with Toth, but that is what we want for next Red Hat.com, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, uh, Gage and Maya, can we can we team you up uh, to do so? Like like um, exercising a little bit our processes, like uh, getting a little bit feedback from these guys, open issues, refine, blah 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 blah, and uh, really come up with a thing that makes uh, them happy. Okay. Sure. Gracias. Gracias. Okay, so I think we have one last thing. So um, it's it was about uh, how uh, the SIP uh, build team could use um, prescriptions. So I think they um, 
wanted to uh, have some kind of compatibility matrix matrix that uh, could be created by Todd for their documentation. And um, so, yeah, I think that uh, what they would like to have is us um, implementing the, the compatibility matrix. And um, yeah, so. Yeah, they might agree to contribute to prescriptions. This might be pretty straightforward because uh, what they ask for is basically load YAML files and uh, turn what's written in them into a marked out doc document that can be uh, shared. I think that's a good idea and might be pretty easy to to accomplish. You, could you take that with you? Is that, is that um, uh, again, seems to be an opportunity for us to practice our process a little bit. Is that um, is it six stack guidance that are gonna take that issue with you and are you gonna create that? Goal from my point of view would be create markdown file that we push to or commit to a GitHub repository so that the world can see it? Or do mm -hmm. we put it in user experience and circle around that? Yeah, I think it can go to uh, stack guidance. Oh, okay. Or both. Mm, there's no both because one needs to be leading that one. So I'm going to make this one uh, Maya, because I think she is the lead for that one. And it might be a good idea to link uh, dot, like have a template and link dot in that template. And I think they also mentioned, maybe we skipped it, they also mentioned that uh, if we provide that uh, tutorial, they can link dots as well. So that may, might be a good idea. Uh, no. If we talk about tutorial, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I lost track. But you said the Ola, it's um, also linked here. Uh, there were a few issues uh, with that one um, that needs uh, double checking. Uh, Maya, I think I have created issues on the, um, maybe on the Scola repository, but I can't remember um, because I was trying to run through it and uh, some, some issues over there, but I opened the issues. I'm gonna have a look at it. At, uh, sorry, you listen to my, brain working that's not always uh, helpful for others uh, thanks cool that's it that's uh, feedback from uh, tensorflow zig build right uh, frido that is uh, the people who looked at, at that yeah. Yes. The email was forwarded to uh, our mailing list. So if you are interested, uh, feel free to check it. Mm -hmm. If there will be other conversation, we will keep you posted. That's it.
Thanks for that one. Um, thanks for taking all the actions. I, I try to put them here in uh, assigned uh, comments or whatever it is in an action item. Um, I think uh, it should the results should be GitHub issues next. Okay, so um, I also had another topic, but uh, we have an incoming meeting uh, with Gage in five minutes. So uh, I'll add it to the document. So we should maybe discuss it next, next time. And yeah, thank you for contribution and see you next week. Thank you. See you all. Sharing.